Today we're exploring the versatile, wonderful world of digital storytelling right here on BFD. Blogging is actually a form of a much larger concept called digital storytelling, which is a really amazing tool that's used to teach and motivate and explore history. It's kind of like an updated version of traditional old school storytelling, only these stories will forever be preserved in the digital cloud. With us today to discuss digital storytelling is Michael Reynolds, the Executive Director of the Center for Digital Storytelling Canada. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me here. So what exactly is digital storytelling? Digital storytelling, um, as we teach it, is actually the process of creating a short first-person video narrative about one's life. It's essentially a three to five uh, minute personal video that tells a story of a moment or experience using a script, a photo, video, and music. So it, it really uh, serves to sort of empower the storyteller and the viewer, right? When you hear a story and when you connect with something, your perspective can really change. You're allowed to see the world through their eyes, and that, that really builds empathy and understanding, which I think uh, is, is critical to confronting a lot of the issues in the world we see today. How do you choose the people to tell these stories, or how do they sort of come to you, or how do you find them? One of the things that we do is we offer open workshops. We also partner with organizations doing uh, interesting things around the world. So, for example, uh, the U.S. organization a couple of years ago partnered with Sankey Gender Justice in South Africa to work with uh, men and boys there to tell their stories of abuse. So you gave us an example of how uh, corporations are kind of using digital storytelling, but what are some other ways that they are? Large corporations are often viewed as sort of uh, big, faceless, organizations that come in and potentially damage communities, damage the environment. But a lot of organizations, uh, corporations like Microsoft, Coke, are doing a lot of things to actually uh, support charities and uh, really develop their corporate social responsibility. Um, however, they're struggling often in actually communicating that. No one's going to go onto their website and read a 600-page report that is uh, telling them about what the corporation is doing. It's, it's just not going to happen. So instead, uh, some smart corporations are actually using digital storytelling to talk to their stakeholders, to talk to their employees, uh, their clients, and other people in the community who are being impacted by uh, their charitable giving. Where does digital storytelling sort of exist? I mean, it's not like <clears throat> a traditional library, right? Obviously, you can go onto uh, video platforms like YouTube, uh, Vimeo, and find digital stories. They can also be embedded in sites, um, and more recently, uh, organizations have been actually using them in apps. What we encourage people to do is really to go online and look at all the different tutorials and um, training that's available, and then go out with their camera and start, uh, start creating. Um, creative activity really is human activity, and certainly no one has a license or ownership over it. So I think it's recognizing first uh, that everyone has their own experience and that experience is very valuable. Um, and then second, the moments that change and impact other people are ones that we have to select carefully to really find the important moments uh, in our lives that could create or rather communicate or change other people's perspectives. Well, thanks so much for sharing uh, your time and informing us about digital storytelling, Michael. Thank you so much. But what's your story? Tell us. Tell a friend. Tell a camera. Tell someone. For more information on digital storytelling, click the links in the description below. And while you're there, you can sign the petition to stand up for free speech online and take action to help a man who's been imprisoned for a tweet. For BFD, I'm David Park. Make sure you subscribe.